I ordered Apple Studio Display on day one and using as my main monitor since then. So it's about two, three years already and I don't need much more space when I'm working. He wants to be in video as well. Usually I have Xcode with simulator on my main screen and that's it. I don't need anything else while I'm working. If I need some reference documentation or something on another screen then I always have MacBook next to me. When I'm working on my freelance projects I just have to have Slack open it on another monitor. Otherwise I'm just missing all the notifications. I do not see them so that's why I need one more screen and MacBook is just good enough for that. One monitor is just enough for indie app development but I also do live streams and also I have indie app accelerator community where I do weekly live calls, monthly workshops and so on. Basically I'm streaming quite a lot and for streaming I just need one more screen and that MacBook monitor is not good enough. It's kind of too small, not too comfortable, I need something else. So I already chose that one monitor, I ordered it and now I'm going to pick it up. Luca, yes Mara? We are going to short trip to pick my monitor, let's go. What did I order? Is it another Apple Studio display? So, first of all, let's answer the question. Do I think that Apple Studio display is great monitor for Mac and for programming? Yes, very. <coughs> uh, yeah, I think it is great monitor. Yeah, it's, it's very expensive. Yes, camera is crap, but I don't know. That uh, 27 5K monitor was only option when I bought it. Currently you already can find alternatives and also, I don't know, aesthetics kind of are important. I like how it looks. The Most of the gaming monitors are looking like crap, so yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that's a great monitor, but there is no way I am buying another one, Apple Studio Display, just for secondary screen. Paying 2000 bucks for that or 1800 no way. <laughs> it will not gonna happen. Another con for Apple Studio Display, why I am not getting it, is uh, it is good for Mac, but it is bad for anything else. If you want to connect this monitor to the PC, it is definitely not the best choice. If you want to connect it to gaming console, I have Steam Deck for example, Steam Deck OLED. Uh, gaming console, there is no easy way to connect it. It doesn't support HDMI, it doesn't support DisplayPort, it is only uh, Thunderbolt or USB-C connection and yeah it doesn't work with all the possible devices as well. Also the Apple Studio display is 60 Hz refresh rate only. That doesn't bother me at all when I am working. I don't know what do I use usually that's Xcode, Simulator and so on. Honestly I have 120 Hz on the MacBook Pro screen and 60 Hz on Apple Studio display I have hard time to notice difference. I believe, yes, that there is difference, uh, but I do not see it, really. It's hard. <laughs> when I was told how to do that, basically when you need to kind of move screens around or move mouse around on the screen quickly and look closely, then I saw the difference, but in day-to-day -day life I I, don't, I do not feel that, but I would like to test how it looks on bigger screen. And last but not least thing in my list, currently there are mini LED monitors already, there are OLED, QLED and so on monitors. Apple Studio display is nothing about that, it is just your kind of regular uh, LCD, whatever it is, how you name those, ESP monitors, yeah. I would like to give a try to OLED monitor. Those monitors are more for gaming and movies and so on, but I'm not going to use it as my primary monitor. That will be my secondary monitor and I will play games on it. I will maybe watch YouTube videos on it. We'll see. I want to have them side by side and compare. Seems that we can go in with dogs here. That's nice. We have more and more shops dog friendly now in Latvia, so that's cool. Look, you are coming. That's all that we got left from winter now. <laughs> Weather is not the best. It's uh, plus six. 
and everything melted already, no snow, nothing, it's bad winter. That's what we got. It's big and heavy. Machina guided the machine. Master. Thank you. Let's take it. Yes, yes, yes. Hop. Yep. This one is the cheapest from currently available, at least in Latvia. OLED or QLED monitors. So I would like to see <laughs> how good or bad it will be working with my Mac. Of course, we got a lot of interesting stickers. I don't know who needs them. So iPad has to go somewhere. The good thing is that you can turn it vertically and then it kind of fits. It's just like big iPad now. <laughs> it works. Two thousand years later. I will not even try to pronounce the model name. That is just a letter and number combination. But here it is on the screen. It is a Agon Pro series monitor by AOC. I don't even know how to pronounce that company name, but whatever. It is one of the cheapest OLED monitors in the market with 240 hertz refresh rate. Hertz or megahertz? Hertz. Refresh rate and 1440 resolution. I don't know what the Pro means in the name, but whatever. Basically, that is just your regular standard PC monitor with not too many features. You have HDMI connections, two of them. You have DisplayPort connections. I have to say that HDMI connection supports only 140 hertz not 240 hertz resolution doesn't really matter working with mac i'm using it connected to the mac by hdmi port stand is not great but it works and you can adjust monitor in many different ways comparing with almost 2k euro apple studio display i will say that yes that apple studio display stand looks better and is less wobbly but you can't adjust it and you have to pay extra 200 bucks to get adjustable stand <laughs> this one is 500 bucks and everything included design is questionable that background with rgb and asymmetric design looks strange but you do not see it and from front it is just black frame with small logo on the bottom that's fine if you don't like the stand you always can change it to the VESA stand and yeah you will not even see it anymore so i used that monitor for a week already and my impressions in this week are following so watching videos on this monitor is great colors are really good uh, yeah it's not 4k so it's not the sharpest monitor but I don't know, 1440 for YouTube videos, for movies is good. Anyways, if I'm looking, if I'm watching something seriously, I'm watching that on TV. So this like something to watch while I'm working <laughs> to get distracted is just fine. I like the colors. Blacks are really black. Everything looks nice. My main use case for this monitor is just additional screen for documentation, Slack, music player or simulator. But when, when I need it for, for, for real, that is when I'm streaming. Yeah, probably that is it. Mine screen with Xcode and simulator for live streams. Then we have music up here. Then I have my Twitch chat. Then I have my YouTube chat. And of course, we can switch in between cameras. One camera, another camera. If you are curious why I didn't buy 4K monitor, why 27 inch? Just because it works good together next to the Apple Studio display. The size and resolution is the same like on my mine Apple Studio display. So that means if I will move the simulator from the one screen to another, basically that stays the same size. Everything is readable, everything is comfortable to use and so on yes of course apple studio display is 5k and working in the same resolution like this 1440 monitor we are getting way more pixels uh, on the screen for each character and everything is much much sharper that's why i like it but yeah generally there looks 
nice together. Do I like that monitor? Oh yes. So my first device with OLED screen was the Steam Deck and I like the colors, I like the screen and that basically is the same colors, same screen and I like, I really like those colors. But my primary use case for screens is programming, basically working with text and so on. OLED monitors are not great for that because they are not sharp, they are they are made for games, they are made for, okay, video maybe. Video editing is fine on it, gaming is great on it, working with text, not so good. If you are doing, let's say, if you are pro streamer and your main job is playing games and you are, let's say, spending 80% of time playing games and 20% is something like video editing and then some e emails and some work with documents, something like that, it's fine, it's not... It's not that you can't use it for that work, but sharper monitor is better. Uh, Apple Studio Display is way much better for programming. And yeah, that obviously is made for gamers. There is even kind of, you can enable target in the middle of the screen and so on. I use it to play uh, games uh, when I connected my Steam Deck. It's really cool, you know. Uh, on Steam Deck screen is a little bit small. For example, my favorite uh, Walking Simulator has... Uh, plenty of text on the screen and it is kind of hard to see it on the Steam Deck so it's better to play it on bigger screen. Also games like Cyberpunk for example. I don't know guys how you are playing shooters with uh, joysticks. I, I just can't. I am <laughs> too old for that probably. I am keyboard and mouse gamer so I like that I can connect Steam Deck, then I connect uh, keyboard and mouse and I can play shooters like that as well. So yeah, for that, this monitor is great. Space Marines, I played uh, that a bit as well. That game, <laughs> Steam Deck is not fast enough for that. And that game kind of looks horribly bad, I would say, on the display because all the settings are on lowest possible uh, to keep this game running. Probably I need gaming PC for that. By the way, I'm using Arch. So that's the way to say that you are using Linux on desktop. And there are other ways to use it for emulators and other stuff. I'm not sure if Dizzy really has a girlfriend, but those guys sound uh, legit. Okay, yeah, but that's this is not video about Steam Deck. That's about monitor. Yeah, those use cases for this monitor are great. I try to use it vertically. And I kind of like it in some cases, but I don't know. I'm not a big fan of vertical monitors. Yeah, it's kind of harder to see very light, right side of the monitor when you have them next to each, to each other. But same is when monitor is vertical, you have to look up, which is not very convenient. And the problem is that then you don't have access, comfortable access to here behind the monitor, I have button. You can't, you don't have access to that if monitor is vertically. You may ask, why do I need access to this button? The problem is that this monitor every four hours reminding you that, oh, I am OLED monitor. They're suggesting to refresh the pixels and turn it off every four hours. So you have to basically <laughs> click no or yes on that menu. Therefore, you need that uh, button available. Yes, you can disable this function, but then technically you are losing the three years uh, warranty for this burned, burned in pixels. But I will need to reorganize setup a little bit because, uh, yeah, more changes are coming. I will. I would like to update my streaming setup, but that is story for another video. Okay, see you. Bye.